My grandfather was a Christian pastor in Germany. He always said he was born on the wrong side of the ocean at the wrong time of history. Uh, he was drafted into the German army along with every able-bodied person right as the Second World War began in 1939 and uh, immediately placed on a frontline unit, Unit 699, that was placed in the heart of Russia and moving through the Ukraine and into Russia in the southern flank. They were heading for the city of Baku, for their goal was to basically capture the oil reserves of the Russian armies and the Russian government. And uh, being on a bridge building unit right at the front lines, often behind enemy lines, there were huge amounts of casualties and, and a lot of, lot of heartache. One day, his commanding officer towards the end of the war called him into his office, his makeshift office, and asked him a very direct question. He said, Herr Hasel, do you believe that Germany is going to win this war? And the question was kind of a catch-22, because if you're a patriotic soldier, you're going to say, of course we're going to win this war. But also being a Bible student and his pastor and having studied prophecy, my grandfather knew that, that Germany would not win the war and so he was conflicted and he didn't know exactly what to say and at that moment he said a silent prayer to heaven and then he said, is this an official or an unofficial question? And they had kind of an unwritten code within their unit that when they had their hats off, they could speak on an unofficial capacity. The commanding officer stopped for a moment and then he said, okay, it's unofficial, and he took off his hat and placed it on his desk, and my grandfather did the same, and he pulled out a Bible from his pocket, opened it up to Daniel chapter 2, and began to tell the story of Nebuchadnezzar's dream. The image with a head of gold and arms and chest of silver and thighs of bronze and legs of iron and feet of iron mixed with clay and went through the world empires that those represented, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. And he said, we're now living down in the period of the disintegration of the Roman Empire after, after Rome fell, and this is Europe today, and this, this feet of iron mixed with clay, and just as iron does not mix with clay, that's the time period that we're living in. And so I don't believe that Hitler is correct. His empire cannot last a thousand years as he's promising the German people. This war has to fail because of biblical prophecy and how everything has been fulfilled in the past. His commanding officer was very thoughtful when the Bible study was over, and then he said, could I see your Bible? I'd like to keep this. And my grandfather said, okay, and he handed over the Bible. And he said, I want you to be here again tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. You're dismissed. The next day he showed up at nine o'clock and uh, only to see that there were two other high-ranking officers on other, either side of his commanding officer. And at that moment as he walked into the office, he thought, oh no, for sure I've been betrayed. But then his commanding officer took off his hat told the other two officers what their arrangement was and that everything that would be spoken would be not repeated again and handed back my grandfather his Bible and my grandfather opened it up to Daniel 2 as he was told that he would have to tell that Bible study all over again and so that's what he did. He went through the Bible study, went through each of those medals on that, on that image and as he went through those medals he talked about the dates and every time he mentioned an empire like Babylon and the dates of 605 to 539 he noticed some communication going between his officer and the other two officers, kind of imperceptible, but there. And he continued the Bible study and came to the end and said, we are now living in the time period of the feet of iron mixed with clay, and they do not cleave to one another, and for that reason, we will not have a unified European or world empire that's going to last a thousand years. Hitler's Third Reich cannot last a thousand years. And as he delivered that, that message, there was silence in the room. He was dismissed again, and as he was leaving, the commanding officer said, oh, by the way, I should introduce you to the other two gentlemen here. And he said, this is, this is a captain, and prior to his, his time here in the German army and his drafting into the German army, he was a professor of history. And then he was introduced to the other gentleman, too, who had been a professor of history as well in his civilian days just before the war. He says, both of these men have corroborated all the dates that you provided and the sequence and the history that you've provided here. Thank you very much. Several months later, in May of 1945, the war ended. And as they were now faced with the whole uh, issue of retreating and going back to Germany, what had taken them months and years to accomplish, uh, the big question was, how are they, they going to make it? 
But unknown to my grandfather and to the rest of the unit, this commanding officer, having co been convinced several months earlier, had rationed every ounce of gasoline, every bit of food possible, because he knew that this war would end soon, based on that Bible study, and that they would have to retreat. You know, as he told me that story later, he said, and there's been a book published now on this story called A Thousand Shall Fall, of the original 1,200 men that were in his unit only seven survived, which was remarkable when you think about it because my grandfather was a strong, had a strong conviction not to bear arms and he carried a wooden pistol with him that he had carved while he was in France at the first part of the war that he carried with him for the rest of the war and nobody ever knew that but he, he, he wasn't armed the entire time. And my grandfather often said afterwards that he believed that God had really been with him, that he had been protected and that it was for moments like those when he was able to bear testimony of God's word and biblical prophecy that made, had made all the difference for him and for his family and for his life. There are two things in my mind that make the Bible itself a very relevant and a very real book to me today. The one thing is prophecy that you can see fulfilled over the history of time. Um, the other is, as we do more and more excavations as archaeologists and we're finding these ancient cities and these ancient civilizations that the Bible talks about, whether it's Babylon or Medo-Persia or Rome or Greece, whatever it is, we're able to tangibly touch the past. We're able to see it in a three-dimensional way. And the Bible just comes to life in a way that, that is very powerful.